to Apex City. I'm Jeremy. And I'm Lenny. And today we are going to be talking about Lenny's character. Uh, so tell us about your character. Uh, I am playing the Doomed. Uh, my character name is Mew Morris, and my hero name is Piro. They're, all, they're always in their costume. Uh, they're a non-binary Japanese-American that goes by uh, they-their pronouns. Okay. Uh, They-them. Uh, so we're always wearing a striped shirt, mime face. Uh, they're small and they look kind of fragile. And uh, so, so what kind of a person is uh, is is pure? So I guess we're just going by hero name pretty much all the time at this point. Yeah. How long has that been a thing? Uh, I don't know. Probably a little bit after uh, they encountered their doom and all that stuff. Like, okay. It only took a short amount of time, maybe three or four days. So, so once the doom kind of hit, um, mm-hmm. it was a very quick progression from I am this person who has this thing to I am just this person all the time. Yeah. Um, so I guess let's get into your backstory then. Um, so how did you find out about your doom? So my character, Mew Morris, was uh, at Apex University where they were attending their first week of college. And like, you know, them, they and their roommate decided to go out and have a good time at Apex City on the streets, mm-hmm. you know, as college children do. Like go out and ran, run rampant in the middle of the streets. Yes. Uh, as, as all college students do. Yeah, so they see this van. I guess. Okay. <laughs> um, to make it as shady as possible, and my my th- my character's roommate is kind of like, ah, I'm not so sure about this. But my character, who mm-hmm. has been kind of you know homeschooled, reserved, trying to impress their new friend, uh, doing all these things that they wouldn't normally do, really Acting kind out of a little bit. Kind of, really kind of pushes yeah. the both of them into like you know seeing what this what this merchant yeah, has this is... out of this uh, unlabeled white van. Sure. <laughs> So they take these artifacts, as he calls them, uh-huh. and uh, it turns out to be my character's doom. Okay, and what are these artifacts? What are they? They are Japanese no masks, uh, and they, they both have inscriptions on them, if you would like me to read those. The first one is my character's, and it says ex nihilo nihil fit, which means uh, nothing comes from nothing. And... I believe the other one is Latin for voice of nothing, but I don't remember what I wrote <laughs> that's that okay. at all. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, so these are masks. Yes. That, um, that have weird inscriptions on the inside, mm-hmm. and what do they do? For my character, Eumoris slash Pyrrho, it gives her these psychic constructs they, that they can create. And at the cost of that, they see this large, invisible box that's kind of inching closer, slowly. And there's things that seem to keep it at bay, which would be not speaking about it, making psychic constructs, I guess, like sure. miming things. And there are things that, like, you know, make it go faster, like mm-hmm. breaking the mask or throwing the mask away, something like that. Okay, so trying to get rid of this, like, you can't just throw this mask in yeah. the trash and walk off. can't just sweep it under the rug. Yeah, or it's going to get very bad very quickly. Very quickly, yes. Okay, and... So, part of the uh, the Doomed playbook is your sanctuary. What What is your sanctuary? So, my sanctuary is actually that mask with the okay. inscription. It's a meditation space. So, if I'm with it in, like, kind of a quiet environment where it's just kind of me and the mask, it gives me sort of like a like a peaceful space to be. Kind of, you know, recharge. Okay, so, so the mask itself is kind of... Safe? Uh, yeah. I like um, that. And then let's kind of talk about what sort of things it can do. Mm -hmm. Um, So your sanctuary gives you access to... It has a couple of things that are intrinsic to it. What are those things? Uh, It is a meditation place, healing equipment, and an aid or an assistant. And how does that aid or assistant work? Is there like a spirit that... uh, Or is there a person that... Like, how does that work? It's uh, closer to a spirit... It ha- the mask has mask has its own kind of uh, sentience and its own way of communicating with my character that like you know kind of like psychically. Okay, so like if you're alone with your mask, mm-hmm. it can be like, "I believe in you. You yeah. are doing well, this good." Uh, I would imagine it's a little more backhanded than that. Okay. <laughs> uh, like th- he's not really a very good friend. <laughs> yes, he's he, he's more like uh, just someone who's observing and kind of. Just judging you harshly. Yes. Okay, I yes. like that. Um, so your sanctuary is kind of a bad friend. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so let's move on there then. Um, so we know about how you got your sanctuary and what it is. Mm-hmm. 
So we haven't really talked about your nemesis much. Yes. So this is kind of intrinsic to the doomed. It's a a, a villain that you are trying to uh, defeat or contain mm-hmm. or oppose in some way before your doom comes. Who's your nemesis? My nemesis is actually that college roommate who I went out and convinced to take these illegal superpowers. And does your college roommate have a name? Yes. Uh, her name is Ruby McNamara. So why is Ruby your nemesis? Ruby's my nemesis, you know, narratively, because they are everything that my character is not. They are loud and boisterous and destructive, whereas my character is more reserved and quiet and Mm -hmm. not so destructive. But... So it's kind of safe to say that Ruby has leaned hard into having superpowers. Yes. (laughs) Okay. Yes. And uh, the other reason is because my character feels responsible for Ruby, Ruby's slide into mm-hmm. her superpowers and her boisterous, destructive uh, behavior. Okay, so her kind of like downward spiral mm-hmm. is kind of your character's fault. Yes. At least in, in your mind. Yes. And so, I guess, why are you, uh, what are you trying to accomplish with your nemesis? Um, really, what Piero is trying to accomplish is to save Ruby from this mask that Ruby accepted. And... Yeah. So she's trying to kind of, like, save Ruby from herself. Really. Yes. I like that. There's a lot to be done with that. Mm-hmm. So let's kind of... I, I kind of want to backtrack a little bit and talk a little bit more about uh, about Piero. Mm-hmm. Um, so we know that they were a college student, mm-hmm. um, and we know that they were homeschooled. Mm-hmm. Does she still... Is she still in college? Enrolled, yes, uh, but she she hasn't, like... But they, I'm sorry. I, I keep... Right. I, I know. I do as well. They were... They they are in, still enrolled in college, but they are not currently attending classes. They haven't actually dropped out or done anything like that. They really just kind of left it. So just kind of stopped showing up to class. Yeah. Okay. So are you still living in the college dorm at this point? No, we're living on the streets. Oh no. Yes. Hero, so sad. <laughs> Uh, so I guess why specifically did you leave that that kind of safe environment then? I think that Piero probably felt that nowhere was really safe after encountering her doom and seeing mm-hmm. what it did to her roommate, mm-hmm. their roommate, and uh, doing all these things. I think they decided they were better off removing themselves from these situations where there were more people that they cared about mm-hmm. uh, that could have gotten wrapped into this mess so, that they found themselves okay. in. So, so it's kind of to try and protect their, their family and loved ones and friends and mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. And so I guess uh, that kind of brings us down to family itself. Obviously you have parents, yes. and we've talked about them a little bit. Mm-hmm. As I recall, they are both professors. But yes, they are both Apex University professors. So this is the college that you were going to. Yes. Oh no. Yes. So they definitely know that you've been missing. Yes. And have you made any kind of like outreach to them at all? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> so at I'm, all. I'm definitely going to have some fun with that. Yeah. So yeah, you've just been living on the street for a while, mm-hmm. and kind of have you just been fighting crime? Just kind of like you know, doing what I can to survive, not really seeking out crime to fight, not really not really being a vigilante, more of just someone who has to live on the streets and kind of survive there Okay. while they figure out what's going on with their okay. life. Okay. And so before we come to the team coming together, mm-hmm. you probably haven't really been very involved mm-hmm. in, in like superheroing per se. Yes. Uh, so you're still kind of learning all of this stuff. All right. So I guess we, we haven't really touched much on the exact nature of your doom yet. Mm -hmm. Um, So we know that there's this giant box around you that's kind of slowly getting closer. What happens when it closes all the way in? Well, she gets squeezed, you know? And uh, I think that from being squeezed so much by this this box, you get turned into one of these masks with inscriptions on it. So this is kind of how it's uh, making more of itself. Yes. And are there any, like, conditions on this, or...? So, yes, I think that regardless of my character's emotional state or mm-hmm. anything like that, it will... they will be squeezed. Okay. Whether they are in, like, one specific extreme emotional distress, mm-hmm. uh, that could result in them being squeezed into a mask. Okay. So it's, it's trying to kind of get you into one particular emotional state, mm-hmm. and then turn you into a mask. Yes. Okay, I like that. Uh, And so, 
does Mew know that it's going to do this? I think that they just know that it's a big box and it's going to squeeze them. And you can kind of surmise then that this is the same thing that's going on with Ruby. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Uh, I would say that it's not the same thing that's going on with Ruby. Okay. The, the, like, specifically. Like, Ruby's Doom would have a different frame than so an not... invisible box. Okay, so it might not be a big box, mm -hmm. but it's something that's kind of coming closer. Yeah. Her mask is trying to do the same yes, thing Yes, put yours. her into an okay. emotional state. I like yes. that. Uh, and then... There are things uh, that bring your doom closer, so mm -hmm. what are they? Uh, those two things are facing danger alone and talking about it openly. So so your mask is probably trying to get you to do those things, yes. then. Yes, yes. It is a very bad friend. <laughs> <laughs> yes, not a good friend at all. No, but I like that. It gives me stuff to work with. Yes. You've had a very hard time, it was a very rough uh, fight, and you're all by yourself, and it's mm -hmm. like, no, you should talk to your friends about this. Yeah. You should, like, confide a little bit yeah. more. Yeah, you no, should I like that. do that thing alone. <laughs> Yeah, there's a there's a supervillain tearing up the mall. <laughs> you should stop that. You're, You're the, the only, only one. one. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> I love it. Perfect. And then you also have doom signs, which are abilities you get as your doom gets closer, and you start with one of those. Yes. Um, so which one are you starting with? Dark visions. And that lets you... Uh, mark my doom track to have a vision about the situation at hand. After the vision, ask my good friend Jeremy here <laughs> a question, and he will have to answer it honestly. I will. I actually really enjoy those kinds of things. It lets me give you some narrative stuff and then lets you get some information that mm -hmm. can help you. I really like that one. Yes. So there's only one more kind of thing on the sheet that we need to touch on, and that's the last backstory question we're going to answer today. Mm -hmm. And I think the one that I'm most interested in. <laughs> Who outside of the team is crucial to defeating, or I guess in this case, saving your nemesis? So because this doom is kind of closing in and trying to get Ruby and Piero into these emotional states. I think that someone who could draw a lot of emotional collateral, I guess, from <laughs> Ruby would be sure. her, her parents. So her parents are the ones who are crucial to do to okay. defeating her. So, so at some point, Piero is going to have to get Ruby's parents involved. Yes. Oh, I like that. That's going to be great. That'll be, that'll be uh, fun. Thank you very much for sitting down with us, and I'm really looking forward to seeing this character in action. Me too.